And then you also want to make sure you have the right materials and tools. So, uh, you know, if you're if you're able to use a calculator on some of these more difficult subjects, make sure you have the right one and that you know how to use it. Arrive early. This is um, I'm always amazed when students come in late on days of the test. I mean, you want all that time to make sure you answer the questions and review. You should uh, review your test two or maybe three times before you turn it in. Test taking strategies, you want to size up the test. So at the, at the very beginning, you know, quickly glance, see how many questions it is, see what sorts of questions there are, multiple choice, essay, fill in the blank, that sort of thing, computation questions. And if you can, try to find the easiest ones first and the ones you know you can do, do them, get that confidence, get them done fast, and then you can work the harder problems as you go. Make sure you know what kind of time you have left so that you have enough time to do all the problems. And try to complete a problem before leaving it. So get as far as you can and try to, f try to finish it before um, moving on. Now at the same time, if you're working on a problem and you're and you're killing yourself and you're not sure you know where you're not sure where to go next you don't want to just sit there and waste the entire test time trying to complete one problem so there is a point where you have to just kind of say oh, I'm moving on and then like I said check and recheck okay so we'll kind of now look at how to to not sure if we want making use of your peers I mean it, we're not using anyone here. It's it's how to be, how to to form learning communities. Really, is what we want to talk about. So there are different lear learning modes. Sometimes you will learn things by yourself. Sometimes you will learn things with others. And really, you cannot be just one or the other. It's to successfully navigate an undergraduate engineering education. You have to be able to to be effective in both environments. And so this is a quote from our author here saying 90% of first year engineering students do virtually 100% of their studying alone. That is not a good thing. And I've encouraged all of you to do group studying. And I'm hoping, I believe that this statistic, this statistic is because first year students, especially if they move away for college, don't know people. And they're, they're, they haven't really formed those social networks. You've got to form social networks, meet people, make friends in these classes and get together and work on stuff in teams. I think I think number two is the main one here. I don't have anyone to study with. You've got to find people to, to study with. Uh, the third bullet, it is, you know, some assignments are expected to be done individually, but I gotta say in engineering that's pretty rare. It's pretty much expected that you're working in groups on stuff. A lot of times you'll turn in your own individual work, but uh, collaborating with other students is, is almost never a bad thing. Benefits of studying in groups. So everything in the real world when you're doing engineering work for pay at, at a career is done in groups. I mean it's just it's super rare that they give someone a project and they you know and they're in a room all by themselves and they're just working solo. That just doesn't really happen. What percentage of studying should be done in groups? Uh, it's a pretty tough question to answer. I mean, you've got to figure it out yourself. What's what's best? You know, you got to figure out which things you can learn by yourself, which things are too difficult to master with just one brain. Get more brains together. The ideal size of a study group uh, depends. Again, it depends. Uh, three to about seven, I would say, is it seven? You get started getting five, seven now. It's you, really what happens is you get too many people, too many ideas, too many potential distractions, and you can get off task very easily. So I think three, four, five is probably the, about the right number. A big challenge will be you can get into kind of a group distraction mode where you're just all talking about what you're doing on the weekend or, or sports teams you like or, or these sorts of other things. And sometimes it might have to be you. You might have to just have them say, Hey everybody, we're getting off task. We've got to really try to, to figure out these problems that you're working, whatever you're doing, because we've got a test coming up. 
Uh, that's it for chapter five. It's it's a good chapter. There's a lot of good tidbits in here, and I would just encourage you to really think about the time management and the working with with peers and the studying and the note taking. To really, I mean, it's about getting you more time back. Believe it or not, it feels like it's a lot of work, but if you put in that work, you'll actually have more time, be more effective, and you'll be less stressed, and you'll just have have a much better time in college. So I highly recommend taking these lessons to heart. And that will do it for this chapter.